Are you alive? Yes. Are you? Yes. Are you sure? Certain. Are you awake? Yes. Are you alert? Then you, should, you need to be enthusiastic about life. So I want you to say this after me. Say, I'm alive. I'm, alive. I'm awake. I'm, awake. I'm, alert. I'm alert. And I'm enthusiastic about life. About life. Yes, are you? Yes. <laughs> you better be enthusiastic about life. Life is good in Christ. Let's have our seats. Bwana asifiwe sana. For the sake of those who may have forgotten my name or don't know my name, I'm Elizabeth Kongo. I have a middle name, Njeri. And I'm born again. I love Jesus this evening. I'm so excited to be in church today. And I, like I have said, I'm glad that I'm alive. Alive, awake, alert. And I'm so excited about life. Bwana asifiwe. Hey, Bwana asifiwe. Promise you'll be telling me amen when I say Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Praise Jesus. I'm a good mother of two grown up daughters. The last one you'll be turning 31 years this coming Sunday. The first one is 36, 37 years. And I'm a grandmother of three. Two grandsons and a daughter, beautiful, growing up in the Lord, fearing the Lord and serving the Lord. And um, a daughter in this house, I thank God for Bishop Jimmy and Pastor Alice. They are my mentors, my spiritual parents. And this far, I'm glad. I have ever heard people say, I'm born again and I'm still saved. I haven't found something else to exchange. You see, if you haven't found it, it means you are looking. And soon you may find, and soon we may not have you around. I'm not looking for anything. I'm satisfied to be in Christ. Amen. I was excited and I, on Monday, this is my testimony, I haven't started yet. We were looking at the book of Job, Job a cross. And Job, you know, story yake ilikuwa mrefu, amekufiwa na watoto, bibi hata anamwambia itukana huyu Mungu ukufe sasa hakuna haja ya kuishi, mambo mengi. Na alikuwa na marafiki hata nao anamwambia, "Hea mambo yamekutokezea, it doesn't happen to people who are holy. You must have sinned. Wacha kutuchezea, tunajua wewe umetenda dhambi." But before we get to that, God had already given a testimony about Job that he was righteous. So imagine the friends are trying to convince him, Ata inga wa mungu wa mesema, we are suspicious, you are not. And the story goes on, until at some point Job gets almost annoyed, I think he got angry, and he started now, not even talking to his friends. Kuongeresha mungu, anamuliza uko wapi, sasa bona, na mungu wakatokezea. One of the questions he asked him was like, wewe, mtu anaitaku wagiza, Unajua kwao? Unajua nyumba yao? Unajua kule anaishi? And did the job ever know? Do you know where that person called darkness lives? You people. Maybe job didn't know you people could be knowing. Do you know? Imagine that's the question that set job's mind jogged up. And he decided to come out of that side of those other people wakue na mungu. Now what was exciting me on Monday was Immediately Job decided to come on the side of God and be in agreement with him. Alipo a ministry maramoja. Kambio, mungu wakawambia wale marafikiza ake three friends. Muende kwa Job awaombe. Na aki waombea, itajibu ya waombi. That was the first thing. Then, he's given back his children and his wealth was returned double double. Wewe wende ujisome. Ikiwa ilikuwa 300, ama 3,000, alipata 6,000. Ivo, ivo. But what was exciting me is that the other thing he got, ile miaka yote alikuwa meishi ripotelea. Haikuwe sabiwa. The Bible says, after that, Job lives 140 years. He saw his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren to the third and fourth generation. Yani hile ingine ikapotea. Ama tulikuwa tumeambia kuna miaka mingapi job. Kabla hapo. Kumanisha hile ingine yote alikuwa nayo. 
haikuhesabiwa we don't know whether he was 70 or he was 80 lakini after that we know he lived 140 wewe utoke pande ya watu ujiunge na Mungu miaka yako ipotelee kuanzia jioni ya leo tuhesabu kuanzia leo bwana asifiwe and I'm a beneficiary of that sasa yako ikipotelea angu ni mingi itakuwa imepotea mingi kuliko yako bwana asifiwe Amen, amen. I'm born again. I love Jesus so much. And I want us to go straight to what we are to share tonight. We have been talking about the mind the whole of this month. You remember? And we were told something. Last time, we were, last Wednesday, we were told the mind is where the imaginations and ideas originate and live. And that's where you plan, you think, at times you even start talking to yourself because you, are, you have already arrived where you are going or you are already seeing the house you are building and you can knock at the door because your imagination is so powerful. It's able to plan, process, and have an end product right here in the mind. And we were given an example, we were told. Our bishop talked about this cathedral for many years. And I think at times, akakukta kaona atuelewi. It was even now drawn and it was on the wall to try and help us see what he is seeing. But before he drew it, imagine he had thought about it, he had planned, he had processed, and he had seen this end product of this cathedral. That's your mind and mine. But you know what? We, because of our fallen nature, we don't always plan such great things that I have talked about, like I have talked about. We even also plan very bad ones. And you are given an example of a lady who is sitting in the house waiting for her husband. And time is ticking. And it's nine. And it's ten. And it's going to eleven. And the lady decides, I know where this man is. I even know whom they are with. I even know what they are doing. Right? And she's in the house. So her mind goes, plans, processes, and knows what is the outcome. By the time that man knocks at the door, because she, she had already processed and gone through it all, the man is like, what? Because it was you, or that wife, not you people, that wife who had sat, planned, processed, and had an end product already by the time that man was knocking at the door. So we can plan great things, destructive ones, but we can also plan good ones, and we can go places when we do that. Now, tonight we want to look at that mind, and we want to disarm the strongholds of our minds. Strongholds, we want to disarm them today. And um, looking at the word disarm, it's taking away weapons from the subject who is holding them. And, more, you know, you can give such a statement like most of the rebels were captured and they were disarmed. Maybe in our case in Kenya would say, Al-Shabaab, the team that was planning to do ABCD, was captured and they were disarmed. Does that make sense? Yeah, it can also mean uh, uh, disarming someone from criticizing you. You know, there's that person, every time they see you, they see something wrong with you. One time it's your hair, the other time it's your trouser, the other time it's your shirt, and you decide, I want to disarm you. Or somebody is so annoyed with you. And we are, we are good, okay, when I was growing up, I bet it still happens with the children. And you'd know today, unless kwa bahati mzuri sana, I end up being beaten and a good biting. And by the way, our years, you would be beaten by your parents. Tomorrow you'll be beaten by the teachers. And if the neighbor hears you are beaten because of that mistake, he could also take up the stick and beat you for the same mistake. For example, you are found in class, not having done your homework, and you are sent home to go and pick your parent. Then you find your next door neighbor along the way as you go home. And they would want to know, why aren't you in school? And it is school day and you're in uniform. And ukijaribu kumweleza na kuambia na jua umetoroka. He may even take the initiative to beat you 
and return you back to school. Before again you go to the teacher and tells you, no, I wanted her to bring the parent. Ukifika nyumbani, si umefukuzwa, lazima ni makosa. Utachapwa, na wakirudi shule aseme mwalimu tena, na umchape tena. Izi ya sirudi. Umechapwa marangapi? Umechapwa na mwalimu, umechapwa na neighbor, umechapwa na your parent, and a second time by the teacher. One mistake. Utarudi kuitenda tena. So what would you do? If you get home, those years, na hakuna maji, na unajua ile makosa umefanya, itabidi ita, ita tutapigwa. You would send, go for water. If you are supposed to pick two jelly cans, you'll pick four. Ikiwa uli hakuna fire, uli hakuna mtu alikuambia ukachukue, unaenda kuchukua. Hata ikiwa kuambia kuna pikwa nini, unapika. And you set the table. By the time your parents arrive, they are wondering, now where do we start the quarrel? You have disarmed them. You have deflated them. Ama ni kazini. Umepewa barua ya kufutwa kazi. Ama ya kusimamishwa. Unaenda kwa disciplinary. Si wako tahari kukuakizi. They talk, they talk, they talk. But you are like, they are smiling. Just waiting to say, I'm very sorry. I did it. I did all what you have said and even much more, which you didn't say. But I, I'm so sorry. I want you to forgive me. Do you know they'll not have any ground to follow you up? Ile tu ataongea, utazoma, ata hiyo. Even that one, me, I'm sorry about it. Okay, my case was, siku peana ambulance. Kwa mtu ambaye alikuwa natembea. So nilipoenda, sasa di mimi kwa disciplinary. I had already decided I will not answer anything. Huku peana ambulance, yes, and I'm very sorry about it. Na hata huku jua ni nani alikuwa naenda kuchukulua. I knew, but I didn't give the ambulance, and I'm sorry about that. Did so and so come to us for the ambulance? Yes, he came. And I told him I needed a, a second car. But I'm very sorry, that's what I said. Would you forgive me? By the time we finished, me, I didn't have any case to answer, and I went home a free person. Why? I disarmed my enemies. Learn to disarm them before they kill you. Are you there? Yes, learn to disarm them. Now, we want to disarm our minds before they destroy us. Sawa, sawa. Okay. So, we are talking of uh, disarming, like, if you talked of Kenya, we will be talking of reducing or ab abolishing our armed forces or stop them from having the weapons. And like we have talked so long as, our, as the world, the globe over, of nuclear weapons. And we have been saying the superpowers should disarm, get disarmed unilaterally. We don't want, we don't need nuclear weapons. I'm sure we haven't gotten there, but we desire that they be disarmed. Now, so we are trying to say, when we disarm, we make less suspicious or we make less angry, we make less hostile. And uh, like I said, if you felt so annoyed with me and I, then I found you with a big smile and I'm saying, praise the Lord, it's been good. And you're like, I want to, I feel like, yeah, but I'm smiling. Praise the Lord, today Jesus has done it. And you're like, okay, tell me what he has done. Sasa sikia kitambo ni maliza ya utakuwa mesao kama ulikuwa mekasirika. Learn to disarm your enemies. Now, what are strongholds? A stronghold is a place where there is much support for a cause. A place that is known to have a lot of following. If we came to our estate, and maybe I'm allowed to say this, the upper part of Zimmerman Estate is a stronghold of Deliverance Church. Ask me how I know. You go to the police, they even wonder, what is wrong with Deliverance Church? Because it's like they think everything that's reported near Deliverance is done by Deliverance. Kasarani. Where do you come from? Where were you robbed near Deliverance Church? What happened near Deliverance Church? Who beat you? It was near Deliverance Church. Mpaka Kasarani police post must be knowing us inside out. And then we decided if you know us, we'll become your friends. That is one way. Deliverance Church is a stronghold in Zimmerman. Especially around here. Recently we subdivided the zone into three zones. Because 
Each that is only had over 25 cells or something. Yeah. The people around here, when we go witnessing, most of the doors you knock, you are likely to find our worshippers. This is our stronghold. But that's a good stronghold, isn't it? But there are also evil ones. Yeah? There are bad ones that uh, we need to, de to, to destroy. Talk of the stronghold of lies. Have you ever met people who will lie you for nothing and for everything? Why are you late for church? You know, I went jam at times that I would jump and jam pahali. Like because that's the, usually the song. You also talk of the jam. Not even if you didn't cheat, nobody would have really bothered about. Nobody would beat you up for coming to church late. Is that true? So why do you normally cheat us? That you had jam and hakukua. Hmm? Uke menda. Umechukua toilet paper ya, 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 ya ofisi. Mutu wakikulia unasema apana. Unajua nilipewa na boss. Kwanza uliimba, tena unadanganya. And even if you said you took from the office, do I have any power to get it from you? Sasa umeongeza dhambi juu ya ingine. That's a stronghold you need to work on tonight. Stronghold of sexual sins. People who will mess right, left, and center for no reason, they are the people who are known for all misconduct, sexual misconducts in this community. And you know them. How about alcohol? Mtu ambaye anafungua, wanasema kutoa lock in the morning, anaenda lunchtime, na anaenda jioni. Sababu is a strong hold. Now, there could be others that I haven't mentioned. That one of envy. Everybody else is not good, only you. And everyone else is not beautiful except you. And everyone else is not smart except you. Have you met the, those characters? You know that could be a stronghold we are dealing with? Of jealous, of strife, and of envy. So those are the things we want to deal with. Because in Nigeria, it's the small foxes that destroy our plants. I think I've ever said it here. If an elephant came to your farm, normally you need the whole village to help you chase the elephant, isn't it? How about an antelopes? But they are the ones who come in the morning when it's, uh, when it's still light. They zina nyemelea, zina kula maragwe, zina toeka pole pole tu, zina rudi the following day. Before you know a whole acre of beans have been destroyed. The small foxes that destroy our, farm, our, our, our farms. And I want to pray that God you help us to do that. Now, disarming the strongholds of our minds. As I said, this means removing the weapons that cause your mind to largely follow the wrong direction or follow the devil instead of God. And what are these strongholds? In the book of Galatians 5, verse 19 to 21, the Bible calls them the desires of our sinful nature. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Do you have anybody up there? I hope so. Yeah, let's read together. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery. 20. Idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, 21, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's one set of strongholds, and there are many. Those could be the results of the strongholds, and some could also be the strongholds. The other thing is um, the thoughts that we think about, what you talk to yourself most of the time. You know we talk to ourselves many times. Am I the only one who talks to myself? 
nine times you talk mpaka you natoa sauti umejiongelesha mpaka unaona kuongea pole pole afadhali tu ongee na sauti what are those things you tell yourself what is it that you think through what is it that you are telling yourself and how is your self esteem how do you see yourself who are you in the kingdom of god who are you in the kenyan soil what do you see yourself as what is your self image like what do you see yourself as so and then the other question i would want to ask after all this said and done what's god's point of view concerning all these things that you have said um last week as i said we learned that the mind is that part of the brain that stores up ideas and information and this part is where imaginations happen imagination is something you have thought processed planned and has the end uh, and you already have the end product now you can draw it and with time actualize it if it's a is a is a home so you have that home if you haven't built yet some have never even gone to the architect to draw it but you already know it you have it in your mind you can see it and that's what we are talking about if our mind is not fed with the word of god it has the inclination to do evil and to imagine evil and to plan evil if you look at proverbs 23 verse 7a part 7a proverbs 23 verse 7 part a Or do we quote it? Do we know it? As a man thinketh, so is he. Aha. Because of our fallen nature, we find it easier to do evil than good. Did you know that? You don't have to do any effort and nobody even is bothered to do evil. They just we just find ourselves doing it and is because of our fallen nature. Therefore, we have to deliberately and intentionally disarm the evil strongholds in our mind to be able to follow the good and do the holy things of god it has to be deliberate you have to be intentional every day to decide today i'll walk right i'll think right i'll live right you have just to be deliberate and if you look at the book of second corinthians 10 verse 3 to 6 If we can put it in the New Living Translation, please, on the screen, NLT, please. This is what the Bible says. Second eh, Corinthians, chapter ten, verse three to six. Let's read together. We are human. but we don't wage war as humans do we use god's mighty weapons not worldly weapons to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments verse 5 we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing god we capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey christ And after you have become fully obedient we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. So what we are saying is it is upon us to dismantle the the strongholds that cause us to live an evil life even when we intended to do good and to live right. Now I want to look at them I'll try to go through the the ones that I'll be able to cover and the first one is uh, shame and guilt. shame and guilt is a strong word and regret and uh eh ile tunasema i wish i wish i knew i wish i could go back three years back i would have made a better decision then those things those thoughts of things you did in the past they can weigh you down and i don't know whether we have anyone who can say i'm free from the things that happened to me in the past they weigh us down and some are so how do i put it maybe the only person who got to know are your classmates can i say one may i say one here yes when you are going to school in primary school and you had uh, two 
two out of ten in mathematics, and the teacher looks at your paper or at your book as he's giving it back to you, that sounds familiar. Everyone is smiling, yeah? We are not very good in mathematics. And the teacher looks at you and says, you are good for nothing. You will never make it. And that statement has stuck in your mind. First of all, you didn't pass mathematics because as far as you are concerned, the teacher said it, you'll never make it. You cannot add up to something. And over the years, every time you want to make a move, it's like that statement rings behind your mind. You will never make it. You cannot add up to something. You are not lovable. Look at you. And then they will pick anything. They kept picking on my big ears. I didn't even know I had big ears until the teacher said about them. I'd look at your big ears. And I thought, oh. I mean, those things. And they can weigh you down because the classmates will pick them and start nicknaming you after your big ears or your small ones or your big nose. You remember those small things when we were growing up? And even up to now, 20 years back, you are still holding on to that teacher who said you cannot make it. Even after knowing you can make it. You are here in Deliverance Church. You are preached your sermon upon sermon, telling you you are somebody. But you are still looking back. And it's like every that time you think about that statement, your body, a chill goes through you. And it's like you want to cover your face. You even feel ashamed of yourself up to today. Please, that's a stronghold and we need to work on it. We need to bring it down. We need to dismantle. That's what you have just said. We need to dismantle it and bring it down. In the book of Romans 8, verse 1 to 4, the Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. Can you have it? Let's read it together. There is therefore... sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous, oh sorry, verse 4, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit of God. You are here tonight and you are born again. You need not be ashamed. You need not regret. You need not wish because from the moment you got born again, the Bible declares there is therefore now no condemnation. You are not condemned. So you have no right to condemn yourself. And then we do not walk according to this sinful nature. The Holy Spirit of the living God lives in us and we walk according to the Holy Spirit of God. Burn us if we were. Are we together? Now, we also have some thoughts that stroll in our minds and control. I don't know whether you have ever. Mawazo tu ina kuingia. Unaona wewe hata unaweza kufa kwa kanza ujaambia uko na kanza na mtu. Hata unaanza kuhofu. Sasa vile kanza imeongezeka. Hata mimi naona labda hata ni vile sijaenda kuangaliwa niko nayo. Na sasa you start even living scared. You don't even you don't even try to go and go be checked. Okay, HIV. We unasikia katu iko. Na unasikia katu misi wezi. I had colleagues who retired before they were ever checked. And you know I'm a medical person. My own colleagues, my own boss in my section, he never was tested for it. He said if he's tested and he was told he's positive, he atakufa tu. So why, why should he go to be tested to die? If he has it, he has it, ataka anayo. Na ninajua kuna wale wameka iwo hii church. Sasa vile kansa imeanza kumaliza watu. I'm next. You are not next. Bwana asifiwe. But you see, you must have the mind of Christ to be able to, to move, to dismantle that thought, to speak it out of your life. But if you are in agreement with the devil, atia vile kansa sasa imeongezeka, inaonekana si zote tutakufa kwa kansa, we utakufa mi sikufi. 
Wewe unakubali kufa utakufa nayo. Lakini mimi ningekuwa wewe I would rather have the mind of Christ and declare the word of God upon my life that because of the stripes of Jesus Christ I am healed and I'm well and I'm whole. And like I told you my last years are being disconnected. I'm starting a new phase of counting from Monday. So you, you can join me. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. So please, endeavor to have the mind of Christ. Claim the promise in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 16. It says, we have the mind of Christ. And so I will not allow evil thoughts. Does evil thoughts go through the mind of Jesus Christ? He is holy in his mind, in his thinking. Yeah, let's read that together. For who has known the mind of the Lord that we may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Did you know that? So you can claim this promise. Tell the devil, you know what? I'm born again. And from the moment I received Christ, the Holy Spirit of God lives in me. I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. Not only that, I have the mind of Christ in me. I think like Christ. I see things the way Christ sees them. I walk in the mind of Jesus Christ. Amen. How about bad uh, uh, habits and emotions? Anger, uncontrolled insults, harm. Huh? When you are angry, Hata unasemaga, mimi ni kikasirika. Naweza kuchukua hii meza na nigongeze chini. And you are this small. But that time when you are so angry, you have so much strength. And you keep saying how it's like it's a glorious thing to boast about being angry. Please, that's a stronghold. We need to work on it. Bwana asifiwe. Those of us who have families, the, the children will even know. Mam akikasirika. Wewe kambali, ka kando. You can even, we can even hide in our bedroom until she is calm. Because it's a known fact. Your anger is a stronghold. We need to dismantle it. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Um, fear. Have you met people who fear? Yani, you think outside your house there is a lion. And you look through the keyhole and you see the lion. Okay, maybe not lion, because Nairobi surely. Where's he? Wakora. You wake up in the middle of the night and you sense there are people in this house. And you know, the devil has a way of making sure you continue to get scared. The cockroaches, and you know, Nairobi na kuwa kampawa na mabawa. Inaanza kutamba kwa kabadi. Unasema, sinili sema. And you can't get out of your bedroom. You are so scared. It's like wakini pata wacha wanipate hapa, lakini stoki. The truth of the matter is there is nobody in that house except your family members. But the devil has inflicted you with fear. May the Lord God deliver us. When such things come, when such thoughts of fear turn on you, you know, turn to you, turn your mind to the Lord and His Word. Second Timothy one seven. Do you know what it says? For the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of my of love and of a sound mind. Now, sound mind also so, says this. I may be scared of this. But Zachariah 2.5 says, the Lord is a protective wall around me. So even if they are inside here, me, I'm safe. And then for every, guys, for every evil angel who came down here, two are left in heaven. Only one third of evil angels came down this way. Did you know that? So for every one evil angel who scares you, there are two to protect you that are holy. Jeshi ya mungu wetu, it is twice as big jeshi ya shetani. So if you are on the side of the Lord, you need not fear. And please tell yourself, I will not fear. Na kwa ni nini hile inaweza tokeze ambaya sana? Sini kukufa. I mean, what is the worst that can happen to any one of us? Isn't it dying? Na sasa we unawopa kufa? 
Unaogopa kufa? Eh, hey, mnaogopa? Amuongei. Now stop fearing. If your life is right, if the worst came to the worst, that is dying, then you'll go home to rest. I'm not saying any of you is dying, but I'm trying to say, why are you dying with fear? Why are you killing yourself? If the worst come to the worst, is that you'll go home and rest. Amen. Now, the other thing is hopelessness. And I'm thinking this is so much in our present time in Kenya. Um, because I live with my adoring mother, we, we listen to the vernacular TV and radio and it's everything, the language you can understand. So lately there was a, a search that was done in Daragua. Daragua is only a small portion of Nyandarua County. And they were saying since the beginning of the year, I'm not sure I, I know the timing, but 76 people had committed suicide in Daragua and they could count so and so, so and so, so and so. What does that tell you? One, suicide is a stronghold in that area. Two, is that there is so much hopelessness in people's lives. Now that's only Daragua. I'm sure if they did a search in Nairobi, it would be even higher statistics. But what am I saying? Why would you think of hanging yourself or even taking chemical to die? Why? Are you born again? What does the Bible say in Colossians 1.27? Christ is the hope in us. He's the hope of glory. And he lives in us. I mean, even if there's nothing else, you could still live on. Maybe you can read that, that verse together. Let's go. To them God will to make known. Christ in you, my brother, my sister, is the hope of glory. And even if everybody has become hopeless, if you are born again, you should hold on to that. If I have nothing else, I have Christ in me, and he is my hope. He is the hope of glory within me. I can hold on. If there is nothing else, I still can hold on because I have eternal life in him. I can still hold on because he's the Alpha and Omega. And let me tell you, David knew it. He said, even though I walk through the valley, he knew you don't sit in the valley of, of trouble. You don't even sleep in the valley of trouble. You pass through. So one of these days, the valley you are in, you'll get to the end of the tunnel. Now, you don't give up in the middle of the tunnel. Like there is one in Rimuru. Is it about a kilometer? Now, if you got in that tunnel and you said, me, I'm tired, in the middle of it and the way it is dark, so then you'll wait there. And of course, there are, there are robbers into the tunnel. There are animals into the tunnel. pale. Now, please walk through your valley courageously. And let me tell you, there's nobody without a valley they are walking through. So, read the book of Corinthians. He says, there is no temptation that has come to you that is not common to man. Imagine hiyo shida unaona kama ni shida imeonekana na watu wengi wamepitia wameshinda wengine hata wako wameokoka lakini walimpita tu na wakatokea pande ile wakio na sasa wewe uko na Yesu si unastahili kutokekea ukiwa na wimbo zaidi Bwana asifiwe Amen Let's not die of hopelessness we have Christ in us How about bitterness Bitterness is another stronghold Yani Sasa ni nani nitasema? Si ni mimi, mimi ni kiongozi kwa hii church. Na tunakuwaga kwa grupu ni naovasi. Ukapata mtoto sijai pata nafasi ya kuja. Ata kunisalimia, unashindwa. Mimi nita msalimia kwa nini? Ata akijua mkutano uko kwangu hakujagi. Not knowing I have like four or five groups that I oversee. I didn't even know your group was coming to your house. Na unaniona, ujanisame, unanibeba, unani... Sasa unaanza kufikiria, hata ah, liyo sababu haki niangalia na niangalia na machi ingine, hata alisalimia fulani na haku nisalimia, nilifika hapo wakangalia pande ingine, and maybe somebody had tapped me, I was just turning. I'm just giving an example. 
maybe pastor is even better placed of what I'm talking about. I'm a bishop. A bishop and mashakaya yote ya kwangu tudi ya kukuja. That's what you think. You think he attends every mashaka. He doesn't. Or you think he visits everybody who gets a new baby. He doesn't. He can't. But you think you are the only one who was not visited. Na unaona hii kanisa kwanza miata nitahama. Bishop Ashuguliki. Evela Domendo hata anionagi. Pastor Ali zata hajai kuniona. Hata haleo nekanagi kama ananiona. Unajiambia, unajiambia. Na machungu inaanza kukua ndani yako. And you know bitterness. Unforgiveness. Do you know you get sick? Me, I know people who went to the encounter in this church. And they were on drugs or peptic ulcers. And the day they forgave, that's the last day they took that medicine. Why? Because the cause was the unforgiveness, bitterness, and you go ended up with abdominal ulcers. So if you are here and you have a lot of hypersidity, and um, yes, maybe all you need is to forgive and let go and you stop taking your medicine. Bonas, if you were, not just uh, that, but many others. But bitterness, let me tell you, can kill you and it will cost your health, it will cost you money. You can read that, that in the book of Romans 8, uh, 9, 19 to 25. But it's good also to encourage yourself in the same book, in verse 26, the Holy Spirit is praying for you and for me so we can move on and forgive and let go. And also in that book, verse 28, it says all things work together for good. For who? For the believers, isn't it? Now, why do you think your things are not, whatever is working is not for good? They are not all the things. Uko hapa? Whatever it is you are going through, it's working out for your good because you love God. And because you are called according to his purpose. Praise the Lord. Amen. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Is there anyone? No circumstance can prevail against God. So after bitterness, there is insecurity. You are so insecure. So insecure in yourself. But please remember God loves you 100% true. And let me also say this. Pain does not mean that God does not love you. The fact that you are going through pain, or there is pain in your life, or there has ever been pain in your life, or there will come pain in your life, it doesn't mean that God does not love you. He loves you 100%. And nothing shall defeat you, because the Bible again in Romans 8, that 7 tells us we are more than conquerors, through Christ who loves us. This is something that I would want, I'm telling myself as I tell you, when I obey God, I shall not fear because he's with me all through. God is with me all through. Now, we have talked of the strongholds. How do we disarm them very fast? How do we get disarmed from this one? Know who you are in Christ. You are the beloved of God. You are beautiful. You are handsome. That's what God calls you. He says you are peculiar. He has put you on this world with good plans. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. I know the plans I have for you as your creator. And I know who you are. I'm concerned. I'm involved. Involve me. Number two. Would you allow God to help you? You know some of us, we talk about our pain. We talk about it. And we don't tell God. We tell everybody else except God. And we want help from everyone else except God. Please allow God to help you. He will disarm you. That stronghold, you become nothing. The other thing is that be aware that is God is, will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Hebrews 13 verse 5 and 6. He says he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And then he also says he's your helper. He will help you. Buana asifiwe. Focus on pleasing God, not men. You can read that in the book of uh, Luke 16, verse 13. You can look at it and desire that you will focus on him alone. The other thing is be willing to sacrifice for others. 
And some of the sacrifices you make is forgiving people and let them live. Wachana na watu waishi, wacha kuwa beba. Mwana asifiwe. Serve God and his people, learn giving as a lifestyle. The other thing is desire to do God's will. Remember Christ at the, at the at Garden of Gethsemane, Matthew 26 and verse 36 to 39. The Lord is praying and he's telling the Father, if only you will, you can take away this cup from me. But not my will, but yours be done. Now, the other thing, of course, as I said, look for help. Tell the Lord to get you out of your situation. Na usifanya yako, wajua ingini wanafanya kani yao. Mimi hii kitu nimekua nao miaka yote tena ndio hii wakati wa baridi umefika. Ile mifupa yangu inaumaga, ile kicho yangu ina Sa ikiwa ni uonjo yako, mungu hata shugulika, sini yako. You need to, have, to know that there is no disease. God doesn't give diseases. You need to ask him to help you, to heal you, and to get you out. Finally, please ask God to relieve you of all those strongholds and then surrender to him. And you can say with Paul in Philippians 4.13 that I will be able to do, to dismantle these strongholds through Christ who gives me the strength. Of course, finally, you realize all we have done, we've been quoting scriptures. How will you quote them if you don't know the word of God? Please read the Bible for yourself. Read it through to understand it for me. Are you hearing me? I'll read the Bible for me to apply it in me and to leave it me. If, you happen to, if I happen to share with you, it's because I've already started living it. I'll only be telling you what's happening in my life. Learn to read the Bible and know the word for yourself. May the Lord help us. May the Lord give you strength. Are you still alive? Are you still awake? Are you still alert? Are you enthusiastic about life? Let's destroy the strongholds before they destroy us. God bless you.